that's all of the theory for today and I'd like to wrap up by looking at a couple of songs that once again use the 251 I think in an exemplary form so first example is back to the Beatles they're big fans of it and let's look at their uh, song from their anthology free as a bird so the verse begins like this Now, the verse doesn't contain any obvious 2-5-1s. Uh, that's a bit arguable because you can, there's, well, we won't go into this in this lesson, but you have conjugate minors and you can view this as a sort of an altered 2-5-1. Now, the chords are C major, A minor, F minor, and G and I'm playing them in root form just to make things more obvious. Now the 251 part I'd like to stress out comes when they go change a scale right after the verse. So the verse ends in this way. And what they've done here, by the way, I really recommend you take a listen to the song. You can probably find it by Googling, by either Googling or searching YouTube. So just take a moment to listen to it. I, by the way, I don't, uh, I can promise you I'm playing in the right key. Uh, I'm just transposing everything to C major, part because I don't remember what the original key is and part because it, I think it's easier visually to see things. Uh, when played in the C major scale especially with this particular webcam which doesn't have a pretty good resolution so I think it makes the black keys a bit hard to see now going back to the song take a look at how they've changed their scale so far no two five ones And there it was. Two, five, one. F minor, B flat major, E flat major. So they've shifted their scale to E flat major from C major. And I think that's a pretty good, pretty good uh, way to shift your scale. Once again, using two five ones in this particular song, I think it's practically flawless. Another great song to check out is Bluesette by Jean Toots Tillemans. It's practically a jazz standard by now, and it's full of two five ones. Uh, you can, once again, you can uh, find it on YouTube probably just by searching. And it goes something along these lines. So I've simplified uh, the voicing, so I've used almost exclusively triads in my left hand and we can go over them quickly. So, so far no two five ones, uh, so it's C, A minor, D minor, E, and now they start coming. So that's a five one. A minor to D and another 5-1 that's a G minor to a C major uh, C major 7 uh, sorry C dominant 7 actually but you can also play a C F so 
So that's a F minor to B uh, flat major to E flat major. And what that's once again two five one. So here's an E flat minor to A flat major to D flat major. So that's a and so here's a two five D minor to G major and then the song and ends with a three six two five one. Three six or actually I played it E minor three, that's the three. A major, that's the sixth. D minor, that's the two. And G major, that's the fifth. And C major, that's the first. So that's it for today. And just a word of advice before closing. The two five one and the five one are probably the most popular harmonic progression out there. But that doesn't mean that everything is two five ones. Actually, there's a great deal of pop music that doesn't rely on the two five one directly or even indirectly. So <clears throat> it's uh, it's the, the the best rule you'll find, but it has so many exceptions that you have to be prepared to deal with them when you meet them. And the way to do with that to do that is to simply sit down and analyze as many songs as you can. That's of course good advice regardless of whether I'm talking about 251s or not. So just by sitting down and taking your favorite music and either transcribing it by ear or looking at transcriptions other people have made just by searching the internet, you can learn to recognize your by ear two five ones and five ones and get a feel of where they're useful and how they can be incorporated into your music. That's it for now. Good luck with your songwriting and see you next time.